Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and today is our one week later update on the Keychron K8. Honestly, there's not a whole ton of updates about it. I did do some gaming and some work on Bluetooth mode and the entire time the battery has not run out on me at all. I do let it go to sleep though when I'm not at my computer. Uh, or when I'm doing something else or using other keyboards. It is really quick to reconnect with my computer when I return to it from sleep mode. You can turn off the sleep mode if you want. There are key combinations on the quick start guide to do that. I do not know them at the top of my head. As for the whole height question, honestly, this entire time, I really haven't had to use a wrist rest, whether it be for gaming or typing. I've even written some blog posts this week, which is something that I've stepped away from, but sort of getting back into right now that we have a decent amount of free time available. I did do some modifications on it and you can either hate me for this or appreciate me for this. So we're gonna talk about some of the more mellow modifications. And the first one was inserting some foam inside the case. You can use the foam that comes with the keyboard itself. I just have some packing foam that we're going to use for our move. So I put some of that in there. Some people recommend using adhesive foam so that it'll stick to the case without moving and shuffling around. Uh, other good materials are, are sorbothane, neoprene or shelf liner that you find at the store. Opening the keyboard up is super easy. I've done it with other Keychron keyboards before. You just need to, if you have the aluminum bezels, you take your screw and it is a star shaped screwdriver. And the screws on this one are smaller than on the K6. So I recommend just having a very handy and dandy and comprehensive precision screw, screwdriver set. I'll link down below to the one that we use. It's super convenient and it has all of the things we need to open up keyboards. So it's very easy. You just screw the two sides off and then you take the aluminum bezels off. The top and bottom ones just slide off after you remove the left and right ones. After that, you want to find out where your screws are. On the website, I do not think they have a disassembly guide yet, but I will show you where all the screws are right now. So if you want to do that, take a screenshot or pause it right here and you'll see the location of all of the screws. Take all those off and then you can pry up the PCB. Keep in mind that it is connected to the battery. So be careful not to just yank it off, do so gently. And then from there, you can unplug the battery clip from the PCB itself and put the PCB somewhere safe. So I did put foam in some places I put two layers, in some places I put one layer. I try not to overcrowd the battery too much just in case like there's some heat expelling going on or something like that. So just being a little careful there. I did try something else recently, although I personally don't think it made a big difference at all. And that is adding O-rings onto the standoffs where you screw the screws in to tray mount it. And I've just read online about like sandwich mounting or burger mounting. So I figured I would give that a shot. But with this kind of case, it's really difficult to make that work because then the two side clips and the USB port wouldn't align properly if the O-ring sit too high. So I had to take those off because it just wouldn't screw back on correctly. So no results there. The foam I've done on the other keyboards and it improves the sound by a little bit. Um, on this, because we have the Gateron blue switches, it honestly doesn't sound like it makes a difference at all. The blue is still clicky, 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 super loud, no matter what you do to the keyboard. So that's that. Another thing is that I did insert some dielectric grease and just some regular lube inside the stabilizers and that makes them sound pretty good. I like that. I do recommend lubing your stabilizers. I know it comes factory lubed, 
but if you want more of that effect then add some more because I don't have the hot swappable version, I do a pretty MacGyvered way to lube them. I don't have the interdental brush that Wildcat uses. So I cut open a plastic straw into like a thin narrow strip and then just insert lube that way. That's also how I've been doing other things as well. And that's what we're moving on to next. This is probably unspeakable and you're either gonna hate me or appreciate it and that is what happens when you attempt to lube blue clicky switches i'm going to do a full video about this later on but just know that i did attempt to lube them using this method that i don't know if it has a name or not but we're going to call it the push stem lube method and um, lube the alphas and everything else is sort of inconsistent but i'm going to include a typing test right now for what that sounds like personally this is a super personal decision i don't like clicky switches i don't care if they're nice clicky switches or not nice clicky switches it honestly doesn't matter it's just not my thing so i figured why not experiment with it and see what happens so they sound better in my opinion and they feel still very tactile and sometimes if you hit them at just the right angle you might still get a click which is and not what I wanted but it's really hard to be consistent when you can't open the switch up. Yeah, I mean, if you're gonna try this, do it at your own risk. I'll have a full video and conclusion on it another day. It's, this is the K8 update video. I did also change up the keycaps to a cherry profile. You can see it right there. Cherry profile is a little bit shorter than OEM, so that does improve the height a little bit. I did also try the HyperX put in keycaps in white also an OEM profile and that was it was nice the RGB looked nice but it just wasn't what I like to feel in my keycaps so I changed it to this one this one doesn't let the RGB shine through as nicely but it feels nicer and the height is is pretty decent there's 
I don't really complain about height much on a keyboard. The only one that really stood out to me was the GMMK Compact, which I'll see a review later on too. So in conclusion, I did the mods and it sounds great. You can hear the sound test if you want. It feels great. The height has improved slightly because of that keycap change. But to be honest, the height wasn't a big concern for me in the first place. I know all of you are like, oh, it's so tall. Oh, I can't do anything. As for Bluetooth, I think it's really responsive. It connects really quickly. I did try gaming with it and it sucked. So like I keep saying, I don't ever recommend you game wirelessly on Bluetooth unless you use like Logitech's Lightspeed wireless technology where there's actually good response time. During the middle of the game, I actually just went and plugged it in because it was getting really annoying. The foam probably helps if you use a linear or tactile switch. With the clickies, it doesn't really matter. And that's pretty much it for the update. Um, for all the basic information and the features, see the review video right here. And if you do have any questions that I can answer, leave them down below and I'll try my best to answer them. It's a really good keyboard and if I were to recommend it, I would recommend the linear switch with hot swappable switches with RGB lighting with the aluminum bezels. Unless you don't like that look, then you can get, you can get it without. It doesn't really make a huge difference. I like the heft of my keyboards. That's it for the update. I hope it helped a little bit. Honestly, it's probably just me ranting, but, but that is my honest opinion about the keyboard. It's a great value. It's a really, really, really good price right now on Kickstarter. You can check that link down below as well. I don't gain anything from that link. If you wanna see the full features and impressions and unboxing of the Keychron K8, click here. And if you wanna see all of our Keychron mechanical keyboard reviews, click here and subscribe here if you want to. I'll see you in the next one.